Hi, Adam Sweet here from Sweet Music Studio. Uh, today I want to give an update to uh, the video that I did a couple years ago uh, on the mandola. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is that the pandemic is almost over and Mandolin New England will be resuming um, rehearsals probably in May and June. Uh, for a concert later in the summer and also another one sometime in the fall. Um, if you want to find out more about Mandolin New England, head over to the website which is mandolinnewengland.org uh, and if you want to support the Mandolin Orchestra or you want to join uh, as a player, don't hesitate to uh, use the contact form on the website to uh, get in touch. Okay, so uh, um, uh, in 2019, I did a brief uh, video about the um, mandola, and I talked about you know the strings and um, some information about the history and so on. But what I didn't go over was um, how to tune the mandola, and a lot of people don't know uh, how to do that because uh, you can't use a standard violin or a mandolin tuner. Uh, to tune the mandola, you have to use what's called a chromatic tuner. Now, uh, some um, guitar tuners will come with settings for chromatic uh, tuning or violin tuning or guitar or ukulele. Um, and um, there are also some apps you can download from the uh, Google Play Store onto your Android or your iPhone, um, which will help you with tuning the mandola. But uh, this is my favorite tuner. Um, it's uh, sorry, uh, don't have my glasses on. It's um, by Fender, and it has a wonderful um, uh, clip, so it can clip on just about any size uh, head stock. Um, and then it has a chromatic setting, uh, which is what you need to use if you're going to tune your mandola. So what I recommend that you do is you start by uh, tuning the G string um, and then uh, remember you're going to turn away from yourself if you're tuning the low strings. T turn away to, uh, towards the headstock. So uh, and don't jerk the um, peg when you're turning. Just turn very slowly gradually until uh, you come into tune. And uh, if you're using the Fender tuner like mine it will turn green and the little indicator at the top will be right in the middle when it's in tune. Uh, so once you get the top string in tune, then tune the bottom one. And what I recommend you do is once you've tuned the top string, you silence the string by tapping it briefly uh, because you don't want it ringing while you're trying to tune the other string, right? Because it's that one's already in tune, so it's going to confuse the tuner. So tune the top string, tap it, and then tune the bottom string. Okay, and then from there you want to tune the D string. Same deal, tap it, and then uh, tune the bottom. And then finally the A string. Same deal, tap it, and then tune the bottom. Now, this is how why you want a chromatic feature. Uh, because uh, standard uh, mandolin or violin tuners don't go below the G string, so they get confused when you play a, a low note. But if you put it on the chromatic setting, um, it's easy for it to find that C and get in get it in place for you. That's that's it. It's pretty easy. Just remember you gotta have a chromatic setting on your tuner uh, for it to work. Okay, I always take my tuner off the headset when I'm done uh, tuning it and that's that's just a matter of personal taste. You can do whatever you want. But the reason why I do it is because uh, the clamp on the tuner uh, 
stops the head stock from vibrating and um, that reduces the tonal quality of the instrument um, in my opinion I could be wrong <laughs> Whoops. that sounds pretty good huh yeah okay so um, let's talk about some real uh, basic information about the mandola um, first thing is it's tuned in C which is different from the mandolin which is tuned in G um, and that just means that the low string, the lowest string is C. But um, it's sometimes also called the C um, clef. Um, the, the clef that you play in is sometimes called the C clef or the alto clef. And um, the, um, uh, the first scale that you're going to learn when you pick up the mandolin, it, mandola, excuse me, is the C scale. So let's go over that now. By the way, the fingering uh, of a mandola is almost identical to the fingering of a mandolin. The primary difference between the two is the size of the neck or the distance between the frets. Uh, so <clears throat> um, that means the seventh fret is way up here. Uh, so obviously, you know, I've talked a lot about how you have to keep your fingers down um, when you're playing the mandolin. But obviously, when you're going up for that seventh fret, you can't keep all your fingers down. It's just impossible. So what I recommend that you do is that you pick a, a finger that you can rotate easily on, like the second finger, for example, and then merely just rotate your wrist over that second finger so that you can more easily reach the seventh fret. You might find it easier to rotate over the third finger or the fifth fret so you can easily reach that seventh fret um, okay so let's do the C scale uh, so the intervals are the same as always we're going to start with the first note which we call the root um, and then we're going to go up a whole step or two frets two half steps so the next note up is D then we're going to go two more frets up or a whole step to uh, E, then um, two frets to C, I'm sorry, F, <laughs> thinking like a mandolin player, right? Uh, and then two more frets to um, G, then uh, to the second fret G string with your first finger is A, two frets is B, and then one fret is C. I'll do that again without all the fret nonsense. So uh, open, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now I, you probably saw me, I pivoted on my first finger but that's just because, you know, I'm used to, to playing the, the mandola. And I also play the Irish bazooki and the mandocello, which have very long um, distances between the notes. Uh, so I'm a little bit more used to it. But for right now, because you're, a start, you're starting, uh, pivot, you know, rotate your wrist on the, the uh, fifth fret to reach the seventh fret. So let me show you how to do that. We play uh, C, A, B, D, uh, A, B, C. Gosh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm I'm doing the mandolin again. Okay, so C, D, E, <laughs> F. Now rotate your wrist by lifting your fingers up and then just moving your wrist over a little bit to reach that 7th fret. Let me do it again without all the talking. Uh, it's hard to break ha old habits um, uh, for, you know, what you have to do. So let me just do it again. And then... So, um, um, 
uh, I should uh, say that uh, every scale on the mandola, just like on the mandolin, uh, has at least two octaves, uh, meaning that you play eight notes and then you start on the eighth note and play eight notes again, um, and that's two, two octaves. Uh, one octave is eight notes. Um, and the reason for that is that this way you get used to all of the uh, notes on the fretboard. In other words, you're not um, uh, you're not going to just learn the notes that you start with. You're going to learn all the notes uh, that are possible for the the key of whatever the scale is that you're playing. Um, so let's do the next scale, um, which is D. Now uh, on the uh, mandolin, the lowest D that you would start with would be open D, but on the, on the uh, mandola, um, the D is down here on the C string, <clears throat> first finger on the second fret. So D, E, now we go F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So the two accidentals, or the two sharps, that are different um, in terms of uh, uh, different between the D and the C scale are the F sharp and the um, C sharp. C major, as I said before, has no sharps or flats, um, whereas D has uh, two sharps. Typically, I would go from the C to the G just to explain how um, G major has one sharp. But because the um, mandola is tuned in C, the next uh, scale up to learn is D. So the next scale up to learn after D is E, and E has four sharps. So um, uh, starts on E. Uh, and um, uh, then C sharp, then G sharp. Now you really have to pivot on your third finger after you play the C sharp to the D sharp uh, because it's impossible to reach that uh, eighth fret from the first position um, without, you know, without a pivot, unless you have really giant hands and. I mean, I, I've seen some people, Mike Marshall, for example, has really big hands. So he probably could reach the uh, eighth fret from first position. And if I stretch, I can do it. But I'm lazy. I don't want to stretch. Okay, let's do that again. So E, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, um, G sharp. Uh, let me do that again. So, um, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Now we're moving up to the, um, the D string on the uh, mandola, which is the second string from the bottom. Um, so let me do that without all the talking. So I don't know if you noticed, but I pivoted, I played the second finger, and then I pivoted to the third, pivoted my wrist, in other words, I rolled my wrist to get to the fifth fret the sixth fret uh, and then I rolled it again to get to the seventh fret. So that's standard and it's very easy to do. Uh, the best way to learn how to do that roll or that pivot is by doing it with your scales. Um, so once again you're you're gonna play two octaves. Um, and um, I've talked in videos uh, in the past about um, uh, shifting positions, 
um, using your fourth finger, all of those sort of things. So I'm not going to cover any of that in this video. But if you want to learn more about uh, shifting and, and things like that, um, check out some of my other mandolin uh, videos where you can uh, follow that, uh, that kind of information. Um, all right. Well, um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can contact me through my website at www.sweetmusicstudio.net. You can, uh, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support it, you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash sweetmusiconline uh, where you can donate three bucks a, a month and become a member. Um, don't hesitate to ask me any questions anytime, as I've said. Um, uh, and uh, if you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe button uh, so that you can follow me uh, and get the updates about the regular um, scheduled events that I hold here on YouTube, as well as any new videos that I post. Again, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.